Moving ahead with Live's audio clips, we're going to take a look now at the sample box and the sample display. The sample box contains some of Live's coolest functionality, including the ability to reverse loops and the ability to adjust the tempo, the pitch, and the volume of individual audio clips. We're going to be working here with the same folder of loops we saw in the previous movie. And I'm going to go ahead and preview my bass loop and add it to the track. And I'm going to adjust the tempo a little bit here too. Double clicking my clip, I'm now viewing the clip view down here. And I'm looking at the sample box, which I can show and hide with the sample box show hide button. Starting off over here with the edit button, the edit button will launch any uh, audio editor that you have configured with Live's preferences. The save button will save any changes you make to your clip and it will save that in the ASD file, the sample analysis file. The reverse button, and let me show you this with a drum loop actually, it's a very cool functionality which you can use to quickly reverse a loop. So here I'm going to play my drum beat, click the reverse button, and I have a reverse loop. And I click it again and I'm back to my default loop. The high Q button is always on by default when you uh, create a new live set or add a clip. And the high Q button uses a higher quality algorithm to interpret the loop. So you're going to want to leave that on at all times. The only time you might want to turn it off is let's say you have a live set with a lot of loops or uh, large loops and you're hearing pops and clicks. You can turn off the high Q and try a lower quality interpretation of the loop and see if that frees up some processor power. The fade button is also on by default and that creates a crossfade at the end and at the beginning of uh, your audio clips and that's very useful especially if you're working with poorly created loops that contain pops or clicks at the beginning and the automatic crossfading creates a very smooth looping transition. The RAM button, which I'm not going to click right now, is very useful if you're working with large audio files, especially complete songs. By uh, activating the RAM button, the current clip will be loaded from your computer's RAM instead of read from your hard drive. So if you've got a live set with lots and lots of audio files, or especially long audio files such as complete songs, you may want to try clicking the RAM button, especially again if you're experiencing pops and clicks or audio dropouts. Moving on to Live's transposition functionality. Now this is some very cool functionality here and you'll be using this a lot in Ableton Live. Start playback of my loop and I can raise and lower the pitch of my loop and I can lower it up to 48 semitones which you can barely hear or I can raise it up to 48 semitones in the opposite direction, which I won't do because that's a very unpleasant sound. I can also detune my loop incrementally, and this is very useful if you have a loop that's very close but not quite the right pitch. Like a lot of Live's functionality, you can return the transposition functions to their default state by selecting them and hitting the delete key. Next we have the volume adjustment. Now I want to show you something very important about the volume adjustment. I'm going to create a duplicate of my clip by holding down the Option key or the Alt key on a Windows computer. And I'm going to adjust the volume of the first clip. You'll notice that this does not adjust the volume of the second clip. So if you're doing a volume adjustments to a complete track, you're going to want to do that here with the fader. Still, this is very useful for quickly raising or lowering the volume of a specific clip. Once again, you can select the parameter, hit the delete key, and return it to its default state. The warp button should always be on when working with loops. You can turn it off. If you turn it back on again, make sure you click the loop button. This activates Live's warping functionality and must be in place if you want to use the transposition or detuning functionality or if you're doing any kind of looping work in Live. So the warp should always be on. We're going to look specifically at warping loops uh, in more detail in a separate movie that's coming up shortly. 
Next we have Live's tempo adjustment functionality here. Now we can use this to quickly double or half the tempo of a live clip. Now this is very handy for a number of reasons. One of them being that often Live will misinterpret the tempo of a clip by double or by half and you can use this to quickly correct that. So there's a possibility that if I loaded this clip and Live read it as a 180 beats per minute, I could lower it quickly to the correct tempo. You can also use this to create some interesting effects. For example, double time or half time. Now you'll notice that this is a bit counterintuitive. When I double the tempo of the clip, it goes to half time. I half the tempo of the clip, it goes to double time. And that's because we're changing the tempo in relation to the current session tempo. Next we have the five algorithms that Live uses to interpret loop files. The beats algorithm is the default algorithm and it's very useful for working with beats. However, when you're working with melody lines, you may notice that the beats algorithm causes some artifacts. When you're working with bass lines in particular, you're going to want to use the tones algorithm. And as you can hear, that immediately smooths out the sound of my bass loop. Tones algorithm is particularly good for working with bass lines, single note melody lines. Next we have the texture algorithm, which is particularly good for working with synth pads or complex textured sounds. Repitch changes the pitch of your loop in conjunction with the tempo of your live set. And Complex is particularly useful for working with complete songs in a DJ set. But as you'll see in a minute here, you can also use the Complex mode and the Texture mode as well on uh, melody files and get good use out of that. So let me go ahead here and add this organ riff to a live set and show you what I'm talking about here. So I'll start playback of my organ riff in beats mode and it's not really a beats mode kind of loop. So I will check out the tones mode here and that's creating some unpleasant artifacts. Moving on to texture, that's not really helping either. Let's try complex. And complex really seems to be the best algorithm for this particular loop. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that while beats mode is best for beats, tones mode is generally best for melodies, you never know what the perfect algorithm might be for your specific loop and it's worth experimenting, especially if you're hearing unwanted artifacts. Now you'll notice in tones and texture mode we have the grain size settings. Grain size is actually how Live splits up the loop into tiny increments, which it then uses when you are transposing or adjusting the tempo. So if you're hearing artifacts, that's another way to fix the problem. Try larger or smaller grain sizes in texture and tones mode. The flux mode is uh, adds a certain amount of randomness into how Live interprets your audio clips and is also worth trying out if you're hearing artifacts and unpleasant sounds in your loops. Moving on to the start position and length functionality, you'll see as I adjust the loop brace here, the length will change. As you can see here, I have a four measure loop. Adjusting the loop brace, I now have a two measure loop. I can click and drag and change this, or I can type a new value in here as well. Type the value, hit the Enter key. The position corresponds to the beginning of the loop brace. And you can see I'm at 211, The start position corresponds to the start marker here. And I'm going to show you this with a beat, actually. This will be a little bit more obvious. So I'm changing to a one measure loop, and I'm moving the start marker. I can click and drag to do this as well. And I'm moving the start marker here, and I start playback of my loop.
and playback begins wherever the start marker is located. So you can click and drag to set these values here in the start position and length fields. I found it's much easier to actually work manually within the sample display. But really that's up to you. It's up to you to decide what kind of workflow works best for you in Ableton Live. So now we've had a good look at the sample display in the sample box. In the next movie we'll take a look at working with the envelope box in Ableton Live.